Welcome to Face to Face, and today we're going to go to Equator. Uh, we're going to speak about ex-president uh, Korea, and I'm with Flavia. Thank you very much for coming to Face to Face. Hope Thank you're doing you. well. Thank you for having me. And uh, so you are a big pleasure. filmmaker. You do a lot of documentary. I saw like a. 10, 20, 15? I don't many? know if I'm a big filmmaker, <laughs> but uh, I, I try, I'm always working. And besides of making my own films, I also, Help. I'm a film editor. Okay. And I edit other people's films. Okay. And so you went crazy one day. Tell us a story about how Korea documentary happened. I, I saw an interview with him mm -hmm. on Channel 13, and, and I was so impressed with his ideas and the mechanisms about changing this country that was so chaotic, had had seven presidents in 10 years, a lot of economic upheaval. And it seemed that the, um, the powerful class was basically speculating and oh, yeah. basically doing what they wanted yeah. and impacting, you know, people's lives, basically. And so he, he was a university professor. Mm -hmm. He became a, a minister. He got involved in government. He was invited. And, and then he be, became interested in how government worked. Mm -hmm. and, and he started having ideas, and, and, and he started speaking, and the people wanted him to run. So, he, but you went, you went there. I went there because... because that's, a, that's a crazy part. See, you went there and then what happened? I went there, I didn't know anybody, and I started walking around Quito, and I wanted to ask people what they thought about Rafael Correa. Who was this guy? What was he doing? And at first I thought, well, I don't know if I'm going to get the right interviews, but when I came back, I was really surprised because everybody wanted to tell their story, mm -hmm. how their lives changed. And people were very enchanted with him because he was very accessible. And, and again, he, you know, he was somebody who was dreaming of changing Ecuador, and, and, and a, he did. He's a big guy. I mean, he's a big, he's a big figure in South America. I mean, I remember some photos with head of state, and he's a, he's a big guy. And, and also, he has a personality, yeah. you know, he's very direct. And he's very courageous, and he stands up for the things he believes in, and uh, and he's very involved. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I spoke with people that said he would work until two in the morning. He yeah. was so involved in getting things done, and uh, I mean, there were so many amazing stories that people shared with me. There was a lady that mm -hmm. owned a small shop. And she was so uh, positive about what Ecuador was going to become that she started asking people to write messages to the president if they thought if they thought they he was a person a who had impacted yeah. their lives. Mm -hmm. And the messages she made a book for oh, yeah. him, oh. and the messages were hilarious. There was a guy who wrote, wow, President Correa, I really admire you and thank you for changing my country. And here is my number. If you need protection or money, call me. <laughs> <laughs> so the messages were really very South yeah. American. Yeah. And there was a doctor mm -hmm. that he met in Argentina who was an Ecuadorian doctor. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, no, you are from Ecuador. You have to come back to our yeah. country yeah. and be a doctor I there. I tried very much to have the expatriate coming back. Yeah. Yes. And, and the guy actually went back, back and wrote a message, yeah. you know, thank you for inviting me to work mm -hmm. in my country. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and so, I, I mean, there were so many in interesting interviews. Actually, there was one cab driver that I took one day and he was all upset with the people who were basically giving him a lot of headaches. He says, well, poor president, he's losing his hair because people are really wearing him down. So people had this affection yeah. for him yeah. and they also appreciated, mm -hmm. appreciated all he had done and, and the opportunities for education and energy. And, you know, he was actually uh, named uh, one of the best presidents in the world. Yeah. Unfortunately, the article did not come out in English. So a lot of 
the, the English-speaking world know of him, but not as much as they should. Yeah, yeah. No, I remember once it was a summit, and then uh, Obama checked the hand of everybody beside Evo Morales and him and, and Korea. It skipped. It just went to the next president and didn't shake the hand with, uh, with Korea and Evo Morales. Obama. Why? Yeah. Why do you think? Maybe oh. because of the militar, oh, military maybe, maybe base? The, maybe that, that was a story of the military base. When yes, he, uh, say, when he asked the U.S. to leave the military yeah. base in Manta. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that story. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm a little bit disappointed with Obama. Yeah. I mean, I think Whoa, you all of us... <laughs> It's a lot of people who have been disappointed been, with Obama. Been disappointed yeah. with Obama. Mm. Um, but basically, I mean, it's a very ambitious project to make a, a documentary about a president. But I wanted to, to follow his footsteps. How do you change a country? How do you start changing a country? And also make the people work with you. He would, always, uh, he would always say, I'm here to serve. I'm here to serve my people. Yeah, yeah. The people are in power. And, and also he educated people about things. And, you know, he had these meetings called Sabatinas in which he traveled around the country talking with people what was accomplished that week mm -hmm. in, in government. Yeah. And um, people were very... Um, People were just like trusting him, had hope that the country would continue going forward, mm -hmm. and there was no going back. Mm -hmm. And um, in his last year, he was in power three terms. He uh, there was a huge earthquake uh, in in uh, in the south in Esmeraldas and Guayaquil and other areas were badly damaged. And he was in Europe and he flew back and, and I spoke with some people who were in the earthquake area and they said, wow, he was up and he was walking and giving people hope that things were going to go back to normal. And it was really amazing yeah. how involved yeah. he was yeah. in, in participating yeah. in the process. Yeah. Now, this is a problem like in the... In Puerto Rico, it was a complication after the after the hurricane because people left and they're not going back. So the population went down to by 30 or 40 percent of the population of Puerto Rico went down. I mean, it's it's very complicated when you have situation like that. People, because they they left, yeah. they were left out. Yeah. There was no support. Yeah, it was no support. It it was very interesting because I watched. Um, the way he participated in this chaotic situation of so much suffering, people who had nothing and lost their house, mm. and people who were living on the streets. Mm. And, and he was always there to talk with people, to chat with people, to tell people that he was going to take care of the situation. Again, the film is, is a film to look at how he managed to change a country that was in a very bad situation and also what he did, what he had to do, because, mm -hmm. you know, we all talk about but, change. But, but how do you make a documentary about someone who is president? I mean, you, you had access to him, you were... Uh, again, the film is going to be through the eyes of the population okay. and how their lives changed. Yeah. And, of course, he's going to be part of the documentary yeah. mm -hmm. because he's going to be able to share with us you know, the steps he mm -hmm. took mm -hmm. in terms of changing things and what he was able to change and what he was not able to change because there was a lot of resistance, yeah. you know. And like, for example, after the earthquake, he went on television and he said, people who have a certain kind of income, you're going to be able to, co you're going to contribute for us to, to, to resolve the problem yeah. a little bit more than the people who don't have. Yeah. So he created like a scale yeah. in which people would participate yeah. in this terrible situation. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that for me, it was really interesting is that he is a person, he's a man of ideas. Mm -hmm. He's always searching for ideas, how to better the situation and also looking for ideas to implement. And I think uh, after being the president for 10 years, he made the people believe in him. Yeah. 
And again, you know, uh, now all the presidents that had a certain level of success in South America to change uh, poverty and to give opportunities are being accused of corruption. Oh. I, I find it really interesting yeah. that it's only like an those people are like being an charged epidemic. an I mean, epidemic. Exactly. But the the people who didn't do anything in never Argentina, in Argentina, Bolivia, Bolivia Peru, Venezuela. Venezuela yeah. So it, it's very interesting that the other presidents that didn't do in anything, Brazil. there was no corruption. Exactly. You know. So, I mean, we want to look at this story. In, with analytical eyes, but also looking for the truth, because as you know, uh, corporate media doesn't have time nor interest to tell stories the way they are. Oh, yeah, yeah. For example, there was a, an attempt of a coup in Ecuador in mm -hmm. 2010, mm -hmm. and the way it was orchestrated, it's so complicated that even the Ecuadorians could not understand. And but the people went out into the streets. They wanted Korea to step down. And he says, no, I won't. He even said goodbye to his family on the radio. And he said, no, I am the president. I've been elected. I'm not stepping down. And the reason why they want me to resign is not a reason. This is fabricated. The media did not report it didn't report at all or didn't report with the details of the, the story. The support he got from the population. And it was amazing. Yeah. I interviewed somebody who was nine years old, yeah. could barely walk, and they said, I'm going with my husband, even if this is the last thing we do. Yeah. So again, you know, um, I, I, wanna, I want to share this story. Uh -huh. And I also want to investigate further, yeah. you know, there were so many things that that he did. For example, he got he got uh, many gangs off the streets. And how did he do that? He invited many of the gangs who were on the streets to come to the palace and have a conversation with him. So he gave them agency. And, and you know, again, the way I contacted uh, the palace, I wrote them a letter. I, I, I sent it not registered. It was just a regular letter. And I thought, if he says his government is transparent, this letter is going to get to him. Yeah. And it was a very simple letter of me dreaming of, of a, a way of ending poverty in Brazil when I was a child. And now he was attempting to do. And in a time in which the conversation about change became almost a cliche, people talk and don't do much. Yeah. And he actually managed to accomplish many a lot. things, yeah, yeah. accomplished That's, a lot. No one can deny that. It can deny that, yeah. exactly. And now, um, and then the Shakespearean end of, to the story is a candidate wins on Korea's party, and they worked hard, and people worked hard for him to win. And what happens next is the new president is siding with the powerful groups and undoing many things that Korea had fought for. What is very interesting is that I look at this and it reminds me of a Shakespearean story. Was this guy an imposter yeah, all the way? Yeah. Was he planning this? Well, that's and, another documentary. Yes, yes, it's another <laughs> documentary. But like for he was part of Korea's government. He was his vice yeah, president. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for coming. And Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I hope to see the documentary me. very soon. And, uh, you know, it was a pleasure to share my no. story. And uh, thank you for inviting sure. me. Sure, you're welcome. That was Face to Face. And then please keep watching your news on Presenza. Subscribe, put your email address to receive the digest every day. And uh, hope to uh, see you very soon. Thank you.